In this video I'm going to cover resin casting. It's something I use quite frequently in my projects but I've found myself not really going into too much detail about how I do it because I use it so frequently I figured my videos would become quite boring if I was endlessly repeating the same things over and over again. So I figured having one video covering resin casting would be quite useful so if anyone has any questions, which people frequently do, I can just direct them to this video. Now it's worth saying that this isn't the way to do resin casting, it's just the way that I do it. And I found a few uh, sort of little tricks and things here and there which have made things much easier for me, so I think they might be useful for other people to know as well. For those of us into model making, prop making, cosplay, that sort of thing, there are broadly two types of resin you're likely to encounter. The first is polyurethane resin, and the second is polyester resin. And if you come into this fresh, they probably sound quite similar, but the materials are actually quite different in their use, and certainly in the way they smell. Uh, polyester resin in particular has a very strong chemical odour to it, which is quite distinctive, so if you've ever used it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Polyurethane resin, on the other hand, doesn't have much of an odour at all, and I've found this stuff much, much easier to use. For many years, I was using polyester resin, and primarily because the art shop near me, um, this was the only type of resin that they actually sold. There are other types of resin available as well. A third type, epoxy resins, are ones that I've not used much myself. My impression is that these may have fallen out of use a little bit when polyurethane resins became more widely available. I certainly remember my dad casting up chess pieces using epoxy resins some 30 years ago. So a previous video series in which I made a zombie sculpture had me using polyester resin as the main casting agent. As you can see, I'm doing this outside because this stuff really does smell and I can't really afford to do it in the house. And because of the uh, viscous nature of the resin, you can often find yourself getting annoying air bubbles in your casts, which were the bane of my life for many, many years. So I started using a pressure chamber to get rid of the bubbles in the cast. Now, I won't go into too much detail about what pressure casting is, as I do actually have a, a separate video all about that. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. Here's a comparison between the two pressure casts and non-pressure cast casts and as you can see I've got some air bubbles uh, in there which the pressure casting got rid of so this is really a danger of this type of resin. Once I started using a pressure chamber things came out pretty well but uh, I have to say polyurethane resin I think really is the way to go so I've pretty much stopped using polyester resin now entirely. Polyester resin tends to be quite brittle and as I mentioned has a very strong chemical odour. Polyurethane resin on the other hand tends to be a little bit stronger, it's less brittle and it's also much uh, less viscous so that means it can get into the small details of the moulds much more easily and I generally find depending on the type of mould that I don't get air bubbles nearly as frequently as I do with polyester resin. Now aside from actually casting pieces in moulds, polyester resin is also frequently used to make fibreglass. So what you do is laminate it with some glass fibre, and as you can see I've got two varieties of glass fibre here of different grades. And that allows you to make very strong but lightweight shapes by laminating the glass fibre together. The polyester resin acts as an agent to um, hold the uh, glass fibre together. And the glass fibre adds strength to the resin, which would otherwise be brittle if it were left on its own. I think for quite a while uh, polyurethane resins were quite expensive and so I often shied away from using them simply because they were so much more expensive than polyester resin. However in recent years various suppliers have started making uh, cheaper polyurethane resins available and the price point has come down low enough to make it viable for me to use them uh, regularly. Previous to this it was only really the likes of Smoothon who would sell this type of thing and um, while the quality of their products is generally quite good the prices were much higher than I could really justify. Now the supplier I've been using is uh, DWR Plastics, but uh, there are plenty of other suppliers as well that I've found who do similarly low priced resins. That's been really useful because I use so much of this stuff, the fact that this is low priced makes it really really useful for projects. So the main differences between the two types of resin are that polyester resin requires a catalyst to allow it to set. So what you do is you take a small percentage of the total volume of the resin that you're using and you add that to the resin to uh, make it start curing. Now in order to do that you can use a measuring syringe and I've got one here as you can see it's uh, seen better days. All you would do is draw a certain volume of uh, catalyst into the syringe and then add it to your resin. Polyurethane resin on the other hand um, is a two part mix so you just mix the two components together in equal measures and the resin cures from there. 
And the smaller bottles of resin are quite easy to pour from, but these larger drums that I've got here are actually quite difficult to um, pour an accurate amount from. So what I found myself using are these things, which are actually sauce bottles from a restaurant supplier, it's called Nisbets. Now I found these things really useful, they're squeezy bottles, they're pretty cheap and all I've done is to decant the resin into these bottles and I find that because they've got quite a thin nozzle they really do allow quite a lot of control as you're pouring um, the resin into your uh, mixing cups so that's been really really useful. Now of course you need something to actually mix your resin up in and what I've found are these things which are actually condiment um, tubs again from the restaurant suppliers. The reason I found myself using these is because a lot of the plastic cups you can get from supermarkets typically tend to come in half pint or pint glass measures. Now for the sort of casting that I do, I'm generally casting quite small pieces and I just don't need a mixing vessel that large. Now you can buy uh, purpose made uh, mixing cups as well, as you can see here these ones have got um, all various measures printed on the sides and they're quite useful but because polyurethane resin is measured by weight I generally find it easier to use these things. Now these have the added advantage of the fact that the resin doesn't actually stick to these so when you're done and the resin's cured you can actually bend the cup slightly and pull the cured resin out so these things are actually reusable which is really really useful so although they're quite cheap and you can buy loads of them pretty uh, inexpensive expensively you can also reuse them so these things will last for a very long time which is really really useful. One thing I have found in supermarkets is quite useful are these small shot glasses you can get 20 or so of these for about a pound so these are really useful if you're measuring up very very small amounts. You also need something to mix up the resin and I've been using these things which are tongue depressors. Uh, again these can be bought very very inexpensively on eBay so I just buy boxes and boxes of these and um, you know obviously you go through them pretty quickly but it doesn't matter too much they're not very expensive at all. Now the final piece of essential kit is this which is digital scales. Although you can measure resin out by volume, uh, generally speaking it's recommended to do it by weight. Um, so what I'll do is uh, put my mixing cup on the scales and pour out equal weights to the two parts of the resin. Now one occupational hazard is uh, spilling stuff on your scales, so it's um, highly recommended to actually wrap the scales in cling film or put it in a see-through polythene bag, something like that. The trick here is to make sure that you don't wrap it too tightly, what you don't want is the plastic to interfere with the accuracy of the scales. One thing I will say is because of the type of casting that I do, generally casting quite small parts, I do sometimes find that I'm mixing up very small amounts of resin. And these scales work well enough, but if it's only sort of like four or five grams, I, I'm not entirely confident that it's entirely accurate. So what I have been thinking of doing is getting some jeweler's scales, which are much, much more accurate. So if you're doing this type of casting as well, you may well find that they're useful. Um, I haven't tried it yet, but it's something I do intend to do. So with that all said, let's do a quick bit of casting. This is a mould that I have which I use when I'm casting other objects. So generally speaking when you're casting you often have some casting material left in the pot uh, which would otherwise just go to waste. So what I often have is a mould like this which has just a variety of mechanical uh, parts in it and I'll just pour any excess resin that I have into those so the resin isn't wasted. Now what these are are a variety of shapes that I've created on the lathe. Some are caps from super glue bottles I've just glued a few bits on to create an interesting mechanical shape um, and like I say I just chuck excess resin in there whenever I have it so that means I've got a big old box of mechanical parts that I can use for my projects um, when I need them. So first off put some gloves on now I've got to say this is something that I don't always do polyurethane resin doesn't seem that toxic so I'm sure it's relatively safe and nevertheless this is a bit of an instruction video so I'll try and do things by the book. So I've got my mixing cup on these scales and I've set them to zero and I'm just giving my resin a bit of a shake, it can separate out if you leave it for too long. So I put 8 grams of the first part of the resin on there and one way of doing this could be to have two separate cups and get accurate um, amounts of resin in both. Uh, problem with that though is that the resin in one of the cups once you pour them together won't cure so you end up wasting one of your cups. So what I've learned to do is just really be quite careful and, and add exactly the same amount of both parts of the resin to the same mixing cup. Occasionally you can go over uh, and if you do just add a few grams more of the other part of the resin to equal things out. So give it a stir for say 60 seconds or so. This has got a pot life of 3-4 minutes so you've got time to do that. 
let's get the scales out of the way and yeah you just pour them into the mold now I generally try and do this quite slowly simply so air doesn't get trapped in the uh, mold now I've generally found that isn't much of a problem uh, but occasionally if you just dump it in there um, it can sometimes trap air so best to do this slowly now the good thing about these small mechanical parts is that because they're so small it doesn't actually take all that much resin at all to get a cast of each so that means if you are trying to create some mechanical detailing or some detailing on a robot or a spaceship or something, you end up with lots and lots of uh, tiny little bits which you can use to add mechanical detailing in, which I found really, really useful. As you can see the resin's flowing about quite freely in the mixing cup here at the minute but after about a minute or so you can see it slowly begins to slow down um, and at this stage it's actually getting really really sluggish so I think that's about to set. Cool so I've left that for about 10 minutes come back and as you can see that pulls out the mixing cup quite nicely. Now you don't notice it so much for small pieces but the way polyurethane resin works when it's setting is it gets quite hot and the hotter it gets the quicker it cures so you will find for larger pieces that the uh, resin can actually get really really hot and um, the same is true of polyester resin too they both have an exothermic reaction which means they give off heat as they cure and for larger pieces certainly they can sometimes be a little bit too hot to actually comfortably rest your hand so if you are doing larger pieces don't be alarmed if these things start getting really really hot and that's how they work. Now each of these types of resin can sort of be thought of a family in that you can get many different types of each variety of resin. So for the polyester resin you can also get thicker um, gel coat versions of it uh, which are used to line the interior of your mould ahead of pouring in a filler resin behind it. You can also get a fixotropic additive which is like a thickening agent and this is like a paste that you can mix with the resin to make it much much more viscous. In the case of the polyurethane resins, and this is a fast cast resin, and as you can see, it's going to cure in three to four minutes. But there's also a bunch of other versions of this as well. So this one here is a slow cure resin, and as you can see, it's got pot life of 12 to 14 minutes. And the reason for that longer life is so you can actually pour your resin and then put the mold into a pressure chamber to get rid of uh, air bubbles also this type of resin as well which is a impact resistant resin now I mentioned that the polyester resin is actually quite brittle um, and the advantage of this type of resin is that when it cures it does cure quite hard but there's also a degree of give to the material as well so if you have any thin pieces on your sculpture uh, for example this um, sculpture has some very thin ears instead of them breaking if they knock into anything they'll actually bend slightly and that's quite useful if you do have thin pieces like that or perhaps some delicate casts that you need to do the other advantage of this type of resin is it cures in a slightly different way. Polyurethane resins often um, cure quite quickly, so they'll stay liquid for a time and then they suddenly go hard. This type of resin slowly cures from liquid to solid. What that means is it can be used to rotocast. What that means is you pour a small amount into your mold, and then you rotate the mold around and as the resin cures it sticks to the outside of the mold and leaves you with a hollow cast and I use this technique for a sculpture I'm working on at the minute as you can see here. Okay so that's just a quick intro to resin casting and like I say it's not the way to do it it's just the way that I do it and I find this uh, makes things very very easy to deal with. So I hope that's useful in some way if you're new to this or even if you're not so thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.